Hey everybody, it's Valen from Mischief of Mice, here with another bit by bit on Tinker's Construct for 1.8.9 Minecraft. Everything you need to know about the mod. So to start with, I'm going to show you a few of the new items that have been added in that are a little separate from the uh, general mechanics of this mod, which is a tool and weapon modification mod at its core. And that is a few new items. For instance, we've got some slime boots here. You can make them with just about any kind of slime ball or congealed slime that there is there. And you essentially can put them on your character. They do not give you any armor rating, but they do protect you from fall damage, which is excellent. And it also gives you a nice bouncy effect, which I'll show you in just a moment. Then we've got the slime sling, which is a couple string, some congealed slime, and any uh, of the uh, slime balls that you may come across. As you can see, there are lots of colors to choose from now. Now you take this little slingshot looking thing here, and you essentially, with your boots on, aim it at the ground, not on anything else, but on the ground, and you will actually fling yourself quite far. As you can see there, now if I were to actually hold the jump button, I will continue bouncing because I have my boots on. And you can fling yourself quite far as well, so you're going to want to be careful. But it can help you actually get up uh, large uh, mountains and so on like that quite well. Uh, but I would make sure that I have my boots on before I end up doing that. Really cool items. Just thought I would uh, show those off to you really quick. And then a good old-fashioned good one here, uh, punji sticks. Just a bunch of sugar cane, and you get yourself three of these. They're really fancy. Uh, you just put them on the ground, and they will do some uh, serious damage to mobs nearby. So if you want to use mob traps, this is a really great way of uh, getting the uh, mobs to uh, essentially stay away. <laughs> All right, and moving on, we have some wooden rails, just some uh uh, wood planks plus a stick will get you four wooden rails, which works just fine with a minecart. They're not powered by any reason, but they are cheaper than the ones with the iron. Then we've got stone ladders, just like wood ladders, but it uses stone rods, which are made with just a couple pieces of cobblestone or a couple pieces of stone. Very simple. And then we've got stone torches, which is just a stone rod with a piece of coal or charcoal on top, and you get four. It's just a little different look. That's all there is to it. There you go. Pretty nice. All right. So now that we've got those out of the way, let's show you some of the new content. I have here one of the slime islands that you may find floating way above the landscape. And this one here is one of your standard ones. It'll have green and blue congealed slime plus uh, some liquid. And you'll end up getting uh, slimes to spawn uh, now and again in the area. Also, there are multiple different colors of slime islands and different slimes that you can actually find. So this is just a sample of some of the stuff that you could end up getting into. As you can see here, the congealed slime is actually very bouncy. Pretty cool stuff. And now with the pleasantries out of the way, let's get into the core of the mod. So to start off with, you're probably going to want to get yourself a crafting table, put it into another crafting grid, and you'll get yourself a crafting station which looks like one of these here. Essentially, it will actually display the items that are in the crafting grid and hold them there so that if you back out of the inventory, they actually will stay. Now you'll see that some of the items may not render on there, so just be aware that it's not exactly perfect in that case as far as seeing what it is, but it is a really neat and pretty cool looking thing. Now, once you've got one of those, you can uh, end up using those with a blank pattern. You're going to end up wanting to uh, get a couple pieces of wood, a couple sticks, and you get yourself four blank patterns per set. I recommend getting yourself a whole lot of these. Uh, typically close to a whole stack, maybe at least half a stack, uh, should get you going quite well into this mod. Now once you've got all those blank patterns, what are you going to do with them? Well, eventually you're going to turn them into stencils, and you're going to put them in your pattern chest. So in order to make a pattern chest, you don't have to, you can actually just use a regular chest, but this works out quite well actually, and you'll see why in a moment but just some oak planks and a blank pattern will make you the pattern chest. Now here is the pattern chest. You see it has several patterns in it. And if I take them out, it actually shrinks. Put them back in, it grows. Now it only works with patterns and it will not take more than one of the same type, but essentially it's an expanding pattern chest. So you can see the advantages here. Also, another recipe for it is just a blank pattern on top of a chest. 
stencil table. This will allow you to actually start making with a blank pattern and oak wood planks will make you the stencil table. will allow you to start making the different tool parts. So if you see here, I can actually click on here and choose a pickaxe head pattern with a bunch of blank patterns added in. Grab that out and I now have the pickaxe head pattern, which you saw over here. I could try and put it in the pattern chest, but there already is one in there, so it's not going to work. But if I choose something that's not in there, let's say a tough binding pattern, then I can put that in the pattern chest. So uh, that's not all that's for. It's not just to put it in the chest. You're going to end up using that to make your tools. But I'll get to that in just a moment. Right now we're just getting the basics down of the supplies you should probably get set and ready. So a part builder is made with just a blank pattern on top of a piece of wood. Now this can be just about any kind here if you end up uh, looking at it. Let me uh, actually bring up a part builder here. And you can see that there are multiple legs and this applies to a lot of these different items. You can actually end up customizing them to a little bit different of uh, style as you desire. But uh, it's a sim simple recipe and you'll get yourself a part builder. Now how this works is essentially you take yourself one of the uh, stencils here or the uh, patterns and you end up choosing a material that works for it and it actually tells you everything that you need to know on the right side. So if I put some cactus in here and it will tell me that if I were to use the cactus to make a head part, handle part, or extra part, which in this case, that's what this is, is it would end up telling you the different stats, bonuses, negatives, and any extra stuff that you might get. Spiky, prickly, uh, the durability bonus from it, and so on. So you can actually end up doing this with all sorts of different materials and it will end up helping you to make yourself a tool. But before we get into that, let's still keep going with more of these crazy stations. So the part chest, that here is just a blank pattern, oak wood planks, a couple of sticks and a chest will get you the part chest. And you can see here, when I click on it, it's very similar to the pattern chest, where it's expandable if I take the items out. Of course, it's only uh, going to change if I take the one out farthest to the right. And it will only accept up to one stack of each uh, part type. So you'll not want to make too many of those. And last, but definitely not least, we've got the tool station. This is where it's at. This here is just a blank pattern on top of a crafting table. Very simple and you get yourself one of these. You'll see it's got all the different types of tools that you can actually get. These are all tier one tools. Different items can go here and you can actually craft different things. It's going to be explained here in just a moment, but on the side, it'll actually tell you what you have, currently a pickaxe, its durability, mining level, speed, its attack damage, how many modifiers are remaining that you can actually add on to your tools, and the different traits that it has. How does all this work? There's a lot of these things that you have here. Well, if you just right click on the tool station while it's connected in a line or an L shape or whatever to all those other stations, you'll actually have tabs on the top allowing you access to every single one of those items at one simple station. Whoops, I clicked a little bit too far off to the side here. And you actually will have access to the chests as well. So here's another example. I just grouped them all together in a cluster and I still have all these different tabs. Really, really cool stuff. And if you wanted to make things a little more, I don't know, uh, hidden, you could actually have all these things back here. You can see I actually have the uh, stuff going right through the middle there. There's a, another item right on there. And it currently has all the tabs. Really nice, really convenient, pretty neat stuff. So what can we do with this? We're going to make tier one tools. In order to make those, get yourself into the tool station and you can start off with a pattern well with your stencil table get yourself a bunch of blank patterns and often I end up making immediately one of every type of uh, stencil there is or pattern if you will and put them in the pattern chest which as you see here it's listed on the side or you can click on it and you'll have them here now once you've done that you can go to the part builder take some of your uh, pattern chest let's take a pickaxe head a uh, binding pattern and a tool rod. Now I happen to already know what the recipe is in this case and you can actually see that in just a moment. 
but if I go to the part builder, I want to make this wood. So I have some oak wood planks already in here. Now I just dropped them in. You can actually end up using multiple tools, but if it's some kind of metallic, you may have some difficulty in actually trying to make it. Those are going to be for a later time. For now, we're limited to things like wood, uh, flint, and uh, bone, cactus, all sorts of uh, materials that are lower tier. So in this case, I'm just going to make a standard wooden pickaxe, no frills, nothing really fantastic here. So I've got the three pieces I need, which if I'm not sure what pieces I do need, I can go into the tool station, click on the icon of the pick, and it tells me right here, I need a tool rod, a pickaxe head, and a binding which were the patterns that I had. I'm going to put those back in and leave this one out here. There we go. So now I want to make the pick. Well, you can shift left click and they'll automatically go into the proper spots or you can drag and drop them into place as you desire. And you can see here the durability is 75 out of 75. It is able to mine stone and lower. It's got a mining speed of two, which isn't really that great attack damage of three which is about one and a half hearts and it still has three modifiers left that you can add onto it which we'll get into modifiers a little bit later so if you look down here we also have traits splinters ecological interesting stuff we're going to cover all the different traits that there are in all of tinker's construct towards the end of the video so if you're interested in that feel free to stick around and we'll get to that eventually but for now wooden pickaxe there we go i now have that and if i choose this option here the tool station uh, general option then you can actually end up putting it in here and using it to make all sorts of things you can upgrade it with different materials you can uh, also end up uh, let's see you can repair it as well you know what let's make ourselves a matic we're going to need an axe head shovel and a uh, uh, tool rod so let's get the tool rod pattern we're gonna need the shovel and the axe head build these parts be right back here we go a matic so I'm gonna put these parts in here We've got ourselves a matic and I'm sure not quite everybody is aware what a matic does it's essentially a cross between an axe or a hatchet in this case and a shovel as well as a uh, hoe because if I hit right click on dirt, it will hoe it like a garden hoe. If I, uh, if I end up digging, it'll dig like a shovel. And it also works on wood, just like an axe. Now, of course, I'm sure there are plenty of people already familiar with a shovel, pickaxe, and an axe. Those are just used in their traditional sense. There are other weapons, which I'll get to in a moment. But before then, let's finish off with the tool station. So you see here, my wooden mattock has actually taken a little bit of damage. I've used it. Well, I'm going to grab some wood, and whatever is used for the head, in this case, it was the uh, pickaxe head and the shovel, you can actually end up, it's that kind of material, will end up repairing it. So you see here, its current durability is 59 out of 60. Well, it's now going to be 60 out of 60. And there we go. It is now fully repaired. Now we'll get into upgrades on how to actually make these things really fantastic a little bit later. But for now, let's cover the tier one weapons. To start with, we've got the wooden broadsword, or rather just the broadsword. It's very simple. This one here is just the same as a regular wooden uh, sword here. You can block with it, you can attack, nothing fantastic there. Then we've got the long sword. This is a little different. You can't block with it. It'll do slightly less damage, and if you end up right-clicking with it and letting go, you'll do a little jumping charge. Pretty cool. Allows you to actually get that little jump and slash so you can get your critical hits in. Next, we've got a frying pan. Now this sounds a little bit crazy. And I don't just mean how it attacks, but you can also end up holding the right-click walking around and doing a big thumping attack. On top of that, it also has a knockback effect. And last but not least, the battle sign. This is a very underrated tool. Now, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but it's extremely good for defense. You can hold right click and it'll defend just like a sword, but it'll also block a lot more damage. On top of that, 
if I have some of these uh, arrows coming at me and I walk in front and start blocking, it will actually deflect the arrows back towards it. Really, really cool stuff. So whenever you're getting attacked by some skeleton, you can actually have him get a taste of his own medicine. All right, so enough of this boring tier one stuff. Let's get into tier two. That's right, you can actually get into tier two items and weapons before you need to make a smeltery. In order to get into tier two items, you're gonna have to make yourself a tool forge, which is very similar to a tool station. And in fact, if you just grab your old tool station and use it, you'll be set. You end up using some kind of seared bricks. There are several different kinds to choose from. If you allow me here, you can see that there are a lot of different kinds that you can actually use. Plus, different materials can be used for this as well. Allow me to bring up the tool forge. You can see we've got the block of cobalt, manilin, night slime, ardite, gold, pig iron, and iron. So you've got plenty of options to choose from if you don't want to use up all of the iron that you have. But once you do that, you can make yourself a tool forge. With that, you can then access four more weapons and tools. Well, weapons and or tools. Essentially, you've got yourself a hammer, you've got an excavator, you've got a lumber axe, and a cleaver. Now each one has a special different uses and abilities. Let's start with the hammer. So with this you can actually end up digging a large area of stone whether it be horizontal or vertical. Really cool stuff so you can make some really big tunnels. On top of that we have the lumber axe which is good for chopping down entire trees at a time. And it works similar to the hammer with wooden objects as well. Now of course you can't forget we've got the excavator which works just like the hammer and the lumber axe too. And if you look on the when I hover over these items just to the right of them, it actually hovers on my uh, hotbar a special item. So if I end up, let's put these clay, no, let's put the iron ore here. If I end up using my right click, it will end up placing the item. So often you can have a set of torches right next to the uh, tools so that you can place them. Very convenient. So I'm sure you noticed it was rather slow to try and work through those items. I mean, these are wooden tools after all. Well, there are plenty of ways you can upgrade your tools. And that's what we're doing now. These are just going to be some of the standard add-ons, which take up modifier slots on your uh, weapon or tool. So let me empty these out here. And let me put something in. Let's, uh, let's put the hammer in here. And you can see it has three modifiers available. The expander vertical and the expander horizontal will definitely end up adding a considerable amount of uh, use to this. If you look here, it's taken up two modifiers to add these on there. And you don't have to add them all at once. You can add them one at a time. And it adds an extra area of effect that it digs in height and width. So let's try this out with something a bit bigger. But before we do, you know what? I was going so slow before, let's make this go really fast. And you see here I've got blocks of redstone. You can actually end up making this try and uh, essentially use up as much out of the stack as possible now. It's much easier than it used to be. There we go. I now have all three modifiers being used. If you look here, it currently does not list the modifiers anymore. So it's been hasted, it increased the mining speed a bit, so it should be a little bit faster. There we go, much faster. And with the new expansion, you can see that I actually cover a much larger area when I'm digging. It's tremendous. Really, really crazy. And if you see, it just expanded out like three spaces on either side. So you can actually add another level if you wanted on this too. But I think this will be... Uh, quite enough. So I went and grabbed a whole bunch of modifiers just so I could show you guys what these do. Now you saw redstone before which will actually end up speeding up tools 
doesn't do anything for uh, weapons though, so too bad. You're not going to be able to uh, attack super fast with different weapons. Now, the uh, cleaver I haven't showed you yet, but I will in just a moment. First, the wooden hammer. This one is already used up for all of its modifiers, but let's grab this wooden mattock. What can I do with that? Well, if I add a diamond to it, you see now it actually increased the mining speed and the attack ratio and the durability on there. It's diamond, shiny. Mostly it did, did a really big increase in durability. So nothing else really much is going to change there because this is basically a shovel slash axe. So let's try something a little bit better. Let's go with the wooden cleaver. It is now a durability of 150, attack 532, 650 and 622, so it definitely increases its damage ability, but still not as effective as it could be. Here we go, a wooden pick. Let's put a diamond on that. Oh, that made a big difference actually. If you notice the mining level says stone, when I put this in place, it then says iron. Well, the diamond actually will increase its mining level up to iron, so you can actually mine that kind of item and lower. Now an emerald will also do something similar will increase it to iron. It, each of these will still use up modifiers and it increases a percentage of the durability. So an emerald on higher end tools can be really effective and much better than a diamond. On weaker tools, a diamond can be much more effective than an emerald. What else can we add? Well, let's put a piston down. That adds knockback. So there are up to 10 settings of knockback that you can add on. So remember, you can keep adding pistons and make it an even more knockback item. Nether quartz? What's that going to do? Well, all this does is increase the attack. You can add up to 72 per modifier, so that definitely will increase its damage ability over time. Usually it's best for weapons though. A nether star? What would I want to do with this? Well, it will add a soulbound effect. Therefore, if you die, this item will stay in your inventory. Consecrated soil. Well, that adds an extra bonus of damage to undead. Really, really cool. And you can actually end up adding multiple levels to it. How do you make that? Well, you have to have graveyard soil and cook that in an oven. Plus, you're going to end up needing to make graveyard soil with rotten flesh, dirt, and bone meal. One of the most common things for people to put on a pick is going to be lapis. The reason for that is luck. That will increase the quantity of drops that you get from a lot of the uh, blocks that you mine up. You can put up to 60 lapis per modifier. Sometimes you need to pick up things that you can't, and that's what a silky jewel is for. This gives you silk touch. To make a silky jewel, you just end up making silky cloth and surrounding an emerald. Silky cloth is made with string and a piece of gold. You can also end up making yourself a necrotic item that gives you life steal upon attack. Really, really handy on weapons. And you can't forget reinforcement. This here will end up adding in an extra 15% chance to not use any durability on the tool. To make that, it's just a bunch of obsidian around any of the uh, permanent castings. But we'll get into that, how to make a permanent casting, a little bit later. That brings us into making a smeltery. This is really where you want to be when you're making the tier 2 weapons and items because this really ends up bringing out a lot of the power of these tools and how good they can really get. Not to say that uh, you actually can get some pretty decent weapons and uh, items just from tier 1 uh, going the way of uh, tier 1. But let's get into this here. So to start with you're going to need to make grout. So there are a few ways to make grout. One is with gravel, any kind of sand, whether it be red or regular, uh, and some clay should get you a couple pieces of grout. And it doesn't have to be in this order either. It can be uh, gravel here and sand up there, etc. We also have this larger version, which works out to be the same quantity of items. A block of clay, plus any kind of sand and gravel in a similar pattern. You can even uh, switch these ones around, and you'll get yourself eight pieces of grout. Take the uh, grout out of there and put it into a furnace. You get yourself seared bricks. Seared bricks can be used to make all sorts of stuff. Oops. But primarily, you're going to be using them to make just regular seared bricks. 
well, a seared brick will be used to make that. These are the different kinds of patterns that are available in Tinker's Construct. I'm not going to be going over those. We're just going to be covering this, plus some of the other basics that we'll be needing to make ourselves a smeltery. Now there are seared gauges, seared windows, and seared tanks. These are all essentially the exact same item. They just look different. So, there are different recipes. As you can see here, there's four seared brick, plus five glass, three glass plus six seared brick, or eight seared brick plus one glass. And it can be any kind of glass, tinted or otherwise. Plus, so once you choose which one of these you want, you'll need at least one of these in order for your smeltery to work. You'll need at least one seared bricks, uh, one block of seared bricks or seared stone, but that's going to be made later, in order to make yourself uh, a smeltery base. On top of that, you're probably going to want yourself a drain. This is what it looks like on the inside. This is what it looks like on the outside. So you're going to want to have this little circle facing you. Then you've got a smeltery controller. This is what you want to face you, this little rectangle here. This is what faces on the inside. So the, the recipes are simple, just a bunch of seared bricks, a bunch of seared bricks, and you're going to want to get yourself at least one faucet. This is what it looks like. The recipe here, just three seared brick, and this is how it fits onto a smeltery drain. You just right click and it goes over the hole that is shown here. Also, you're probably going to want yourself a casting table and a casting basin. At least one of each would probably help, though one of them is probably all that's required. Usually a casting table is all that you need. A casting basin will end up helping you out immensely later on. So to start off with, let's grab a few tools. Now I'm going to put down seared bricks first. Then I'm going to grab a seared gauge because that's going to be my uh, producer there. I'll show you what I mean by that in a moment. We're going to put down the drain so that the circle is facing out and the square is facing in. Smeltery controller. And then we just seal off the backside with either another seared gauge, another smeltery drain, or just seared bricks. And you'll know that it's working if you get this little particle effect here. Now you'll see we have one slot, so we could actually smelt one block at a time. Very, very small. This is about as small as you could get uh, making a uh, smeltery. Now, of course, this is actually storing fuel. So if I take lava and right click on it, it will actually end up adding fuel. And when I right click on the controller, you'll see it has fuel showing up on the side. So any fuel that is in any of the uh, items that are considered part of the smeltery will end up being used as it's needed. All right, so you're probably wondering, what in the world am I gonna need a one block smeltery for? That's kind of ridiculous. I mean, it, it doesn't work like a furnace where you can put a stack in, it, it's one block. Well, you can actually end up making it, oops, bigger by just adding in another layer. That ends up doubling it. Or, if you want, you can actually end up expanding it out a little further in another direction. Let's do this, and then add over here. And you can see it's actually got four slots now. So as many spaces as you can put blocks is how big it's going to be on the inside. You can stack it up to be a really big chimney if you want. Uh, just shift right click on top of the smeltery controller if you're having trouble uh, placing it. And you can end up constantly expanding it. Now the thing is you can only expand uh, so that it still makes a square or a rectangle. You cannot expand it so that it makes like weird shapes in, the, in like a, an L shape or um, a Z's or something like that. It will have to be a square or rectangle. Okay, so you can see here, I have quite a smeltery setup. If I end up hovering over it, you can see that it is of rectangular shape. That's just something that I decided to go with. It doesn't mean that you have to. And I ended up putting a whole bunch of seared gauges around here so I could see inside, as well as the uh, contents of the lava, very easy. Now, if I right click on here, you can see I actually have quite a bit of storage in there. So uh, let's put a whole bunch of cobblestone in. There you go, I've got 32 cobblestone in there. It's pretty darn good. But actually, I'm gonna drop in a bunch of iron ore so that we can end up getting that going. I'm also gonna drop a bunch of clay. Now, you'll see why in just a moment. In the meantime, I have these faucets over top of casting tables, casting basins, seared tanks, windows, and gauges. Now, remember, 
tanks, windows, and gauges are all essentially the same block. They just look a little different. So, with that in mind, we're going to need to make ourselves some casts so that we can actually pour molten metals and other items out of this into those casts. How do we make that? Well, clay is one method, gold another. There's also aluminum brass. So, if you look here, whoops, we have aluminum brass. Now the thing is, in the old Tinker's Construct, there was aluminum and copper, and those were uh, self-populating in the world. In this version, there isn't. So if you do not have any mods installed that bring those uh, metals into the world, you won't be able to make aluminum brass. But not to worry, you can use gold or you can use clay, and therefore make yourself two different kinds of casts. Using gold, for instance, not that I need that much, but I'm going to put in, let's say, six pieces. And then I'm going to grab myself. Actually, there already is clay in there. You see the clay has turned molten. So essentially, if I end up putting something like, let's say, a seared brick down, and I have the molten iron is on the bottom. Well, I'm going to put the clay on the bottom by just left-clicking. Putting that on the bottom, it is going to be the item that drains out first. So if I right-click on the faucet, nothing will happen because currently there is no clay version of an ingot cast. So therefore, I will have to need to get some other kind of cast. In order to make a cast for larger items or uh, other tools and weapons, you'll end up needing to probably end up using something like flint or stone, some kind of easy resource. Let's grab this stone axe head for example. If I just take this over here and place it down, right click the faucet, it ends up pouring out. Now if I put, now that's done pouring, so I'm going to end up putting the gold on the bottom. Now if I end up getting myself another one of those, I have another axe head, I put it over here, and you'll see that I have gold on the bottom. I right click it, and it will make a permanent cast. The clay casts are good for one use. So let's say I want to make an iron hatchet. All right, well, if I end up pouring this into the clay version and the gold version, you'll see that the clay one disappeared. So that's just a one-time use. It'll work for very low level or if you're a bit shy on gold, but this one here, I can pick it up and still keep reusing it. All right, well, you're probably thinking, well, we've got some other things in here too. We've got casting basins, and we've got these different gauges, tanks, and windows. Well, what good are they going to be? You can actually put lava and water into the smeltery. Just right-click on the smeltery drain, not the faucet, and you will end up putting in water. It also works with lava. Now, if you put those together, you'll get molten obsidian. So you're going to want to be careful to keep those a bit separate. But for now, I'm going to add in some more water so that we can a I can actually show you what it is I'm trying to do. You see we've got water, we've got obsidian, clay, gold, iron. Oh boy, we've got plenty going on in there. Well, how do we get that water back out? I accidentally clicked on there. Well, just left click it to get it to the bottom and then end up pouring it into one of the tanks. Right click here and it will actually end up pouring that one bucket out. Each of these tanks will hold four buckets of a liquid. Now if you look here, we have one block of molten obsidian. Well, therefore, with this casting basin, if I right click that, it pours out iron because I left that on the bottom. My bad. That's alright. I'm going to let that finish and then I'll click on the obsidian. If you look here though, the iron is actually cooling. It's going to form an entire block, which is often much quicker than taking a uh, ingot cast, which you actually could make an ingot cast uh, by placing down a ingot and pouring gold over it, or aluminum brass of your choosing. And there we go, I now have a block of iron. Pretty nifty. But let's get this obsidian out of here. Now that I've got that, I can end up right clicking, it'll fill this up, and it'll cool into an obsidian block. Next up, I'm gonna make myself a sharpening kit the heck is a sharpening kit? This essentially will allow a tool to get kind of another modifier in a way. It all depends on how you use it. So in this case, I'm actually going to use it to make myself a pattern. So I just used a cobblestone with a sharpening kit 
so I now have a cobblestone sharpening kit. I'm going to put it down here and then I'm going to pour molten clay over it. Now essentially what these do is uh, they end up allowing a tool to mine uh, up to the level that it is appropriate for. So that kind of sounds confusing. Allow me to explain further by end up getting the obsidian down to the bottom and pouring that into this cast. So you see now I have an obsidian sharpening kit. I don't think I have any picks on here, so let me grab a regular pick here. I'm going to get a very low level one, a wooden pickaxe. Well, that is going to be a bit weird. Let's see, I have some flint, sharpening kit, and a wooden pickaxe. And if you look on here, it actually says combine with a flint. Upgrades your tool to the materials mining level. Mining level cobalt, which is excellent. Essentially, all this does is it allows whatever tool I put in here, specifically, it's probably going to be a pick, uh, to, a, to be able to mine probably a better version of that material. So in this case, I can now actually mine f um, cobalt with a wooden pickaxe. It's crazy. Which you will actually probably need to do this with some kind of weapon, or tool rather, uh, so that you can actually end up mining ardite, and cobalt in the nether. Those two, two uh, items there are going to be very valuable for later on. All right, well, I've got a whole lot of molten clay in here. How do I get that out? Well, I could just sit here and right click all day, or you can actually modify this so that you can end up running it by itself. Now, I have a chest hooked up to some hoppers underneath a casting basin and a casting table with an ingot cast in it. Very simple stuff some redstone going around here, and if I right click this on and off, it will automatically, over time, keep sending a redstone pulse to here and have this emptied out. Pretty nifty stuff. So it's very simple, you can actually automate this to do this. Uh, the best part about the smeltery is that almost all ores, it will double. The only ones that it won't is going to be ardite and cobalt. Another advantage to having a Tinker's Construct tool is that this sword has been sitting here floating since uh, well before I started this video. It's essentially a sword that I made a while ago, a magma slime broadsword. Crazy. Well, this here is actually going to sit in the world forever. These don't despawn as far as I've been able to tell. There probably is some kind of uh, cap on there, but uh, it's not too bad. And on top of that, if I end up pouring in some lava and dropping this sword in there, oh no, all the stuff that I spent on it. Wait a second. These things are pretty indestructible. <laughs> so you should be pretty safe with most of your weapons in this mod. And now for the last part, all of the different types of material modifier bonuses that you can get. I've got all these. I did a lot of testing, a lot of figuring out, and this should cover it all. First and foremost, the different uh, terms that I'm going to be using. A head is going to be represented by all of these items here. A handle is going to be represented by these, which is primarily a tough tool rod and a regular tool rod. Extra is going to be any of these, which is the, uh, the bindings and the hilts plus the tough tool rod. It's the only item that actually is covered as a handle and an extra item. So, essentially, all of these two... Uh, materials will give some kind of effect. Uh, if you look in here, you'll see it says cheapskate and cheap. These are the different traits that the tools will have. So essentially, you can end up using all sorts of different materials to get all sorts of different traits. And you only have to have one of them in order to get that bonus. Now, if you have multiples, often they do stack and create a better effect. Uh, so if you get a 10% bonus of something from one material and you have three parts that are all made of the same material, then you'll probably get a 30% bonus, bonus in most cases. So let's get into some of the materials. To start with, uh, this auto smelt ability is from firewood, which is this stuff here. Really cool. It's actually got kind of an animated texture. Uh, it's made with lava wood and blaze powder. Lava wood of course, is made by putting lava in a smeltery and pouring it over top of wood planks that are inside of a casting basin. 
pretty crazy stuff. Now it will uh, consume this wood and give you lava wood instead. So it's pretty neat stuff. I do like it. It's uh, you know just really cool to look at as well. But uh, there you go. So the firewood, by using that as a material to craft your tools, you'll end up being able to, uh, any blocks that you harvest with it will be smelted. So if you're using uh, firewood for a shovel, you'll end up, uh, any uh, sand will end up turning into glass. If you use it for a pick, then any of your cobblestone will turn into smooth stone. Keep that in mind pretty neat stuff but it only has a mining level of stone you'd probably have to upgrade that so that it can actually end up going higher durability is listed the mining speed is six which is actually a little bit above average and it's got an attack damage rating here so now that you got the basics I'll just be going over this and this for the rest of the materials I should mention that the head which is these parts here is this the handle, which of course is the uh, tool rod or the tough tool rod, and the extra is the uh, little part here. Now how these work actually is, all the durabilities are added up on the tool. Let's say it's made entirely of firewood. 550 plus 150 minus 200 times the modifier of 1. In this case, it would just end up staying the same number, so that's a relief. And in other ones, it may change quite a bit. It'll never go below one though for your durability. So another one, aquadynamic. This is prismarine. This underwater, you will have a normal mining speed. Plus, if you're in the rain, you'll end up speeding up. The more and heavier the rain, the faster you'll end up mining. Pretty handy stuff. Eridiculous, which is netherrack. It speeds up the hotter the biome is. So if you're in a desert, you're going pretty fast. If you're in the nether, you're going really fast. So you might end up wanting to have yourself a set of nether tools. Baconlicious. This is made with pig iron. Pig iron, of course, is a little bit more unique than you might think. Here's the ingots, which <laughs> they kind of look cute, actually, um, and the, the nugget form as well. But essentially, those are made from molten pig iron, which, hold on a second here, is made with molten emerald, blood, and molten iron. To get blood, you can either push mobs into your smeltery while there is lava feeding into, uh, not into it necessarily, but at least there is some in the uh, tanks around it. Uh, uh, or you could jump in yourself, but that's a bit risky. Sometimes you're able to get away with it as long as you make sure you can get back out again. So as I was saying, Baconlicious. This essentially, whenever you're hitting things, whether it be with a tool or a weapon, it sometimes will give you a piece of bacon which, if you eat that, will refill to hunger. Pretty cool that your items and weapons can give you food. All right, cheap. This is stone or cobblestone. This one here, in comparison to other materials, if you use some stone or cobblestone to repair your tools, then you'll actually end up getting 10% more durability repaired from stone or cobblestone than you would in comparison to other tools. Next cheap skate which is stone or cobblestone now if you notice this one here is the handle this one here is the extra part this is a different ability for just the tool head this is why sometimes there are multiple options available cheap and cheapskate cheapskate has a little different effect your tool will just have a lot less durability the more the or the uh, <laughs> the more total the more lost uh, it's sorry for my uh, bad English there the higher the total durability the more durability you will lose. Cold-blooded. This is made from manilin, another one of those tool, uh, one of those uh, alloys that is actually a little bit strange to make. I mentioned it earlier, and it's actually made in a smeltery with molten cobalt and molten ardite. Together, we'll make molten manilin which is actually a much better alloy in a lot of cases. You'll find ardite and cobalt in the nether. And what does cold-blooded do? This will deal more damage to targets with full health. So that one big first strike that you get will end up doing a lot more damage. All right, next one, crude. This is uh, received from flint. So you get 10% extra damage to armored targets. 
pretty handy if you're ending up fighting a whole bunch of zombies wearing the gold armor. Then you've got Crumbling. This is Night Slime. Night Slime is another one of those unique alloys. Looks a bit funky, but it's made in the smeltery with seared stone, which is just melted cobble, liquid purple slime, which you'll get from some of those floating islands, and molten iron. And what does this do? Well, the tool breaks soft blocks that don't need a tool faster. Essentially, if I use a pickaxe on stone versus, log, or versus logs or uh, dirt, it will end up breaking the logs and dirt at the same speed as I was the stone. Durite obsidian. This one here, a chance to use more or less durability. In other words, you may use more durability sometimes, other times you may use less, but essentially you're using about 70% of the durability, so you're, you're kind of, you know, saving 30% one way or another, on average. Ecological. This one is just wood. This is something that you probably already saw earlier because I had all those wood tools. So you have a slight small chance to repair some small amount of durability every now and again. Enderference. This is from Endstone. On hit, it prevents an Enderman from teleporting for a short time. Flammable. Magma slime. Now this is a little bit confusing because it's actually crystals. Now making magma slime is just made with slime balls and so on. Magma slime, I was actually meaning magma slime crystals. These are made by smelting slimy magma mud, which is made from slime balls, magma cream, soul sand, and netherrack. Quite the recipe. Essentially, this is flammable. Blocking blocks fire attacks and sets the attacker on fire. So if you have a sword that you can block with, or a sign in that case, and you are being attacked with a fire attacks, you can actually uh, prevent yourself from taking any fire damage. Now you still will end up being set on fire, but you actually won't be taking damage. It also works in lava. I tested this. You can actually swim in lava with this, though your weapon will take durability damage very fast. So it's more of a uh, safety measure than anything else. Plus, the fact that it can actually set the attacker on fire might actually be of benefit. Hellish, made from netherrack. Bonus damage to non-nether targets. So therefore, just about everybody in the overworld. Insatiable, another manilin one. This one only for the head. Deal more and more damage in combat. Uses more and more durability. Jagged, this one here is prismarine. As durability goes down, damage goes up. Lightweight, mining speed up by 10% of your total. So this could really be beneficial on something with a really high mining speed. Magnetic. Using the tool causes small item magnet effect. So essentially, if I mine something and it drops to the floor, I will actually have a small area magnetic field. You can actually increase this, same with a lot of others, so that it will affect a bigger area. Momentum. Cobalt. Continuous mining means, means that you end up mining faster and faster and faster. But as soon as you stop, you'll go back to your normal mining speed. Petramor, Ardite. Chance to restore durability on stone type blocks. So if they're hard, like stone, seared pavers, and so on, then you end up having a chance of getting that to work. Prickly, it's a cactus. Possible damage is dealt to the target or yourself if you're mining. Spiky, it's also a cactus, but for the handle and extra parts. You get damage on the attacker if you're blocking. Slimy, with blue slime crystals. This is similar to the magma slime, but a little bit different. Blue slime crystals are made from blue slimy mud, which is a bunch of blue slime balls, plus some kind of sand and dirt. All smelted, and you get yourself blue slime crystals. This will allow a chance to spawn a slime on use. Now the green slime is the same way, just with green slime crystals and it'll spawn a green slime on use. You'll notice though that the uh, statistics are slightly different. Splinters, this is something that wood can give you. When in use, you have a chance to deal splinter damage. It's armor piercing. Splintering, this you get from bones. 
<laughs> it adds up to five levels of splinter damage effect with more attacks. So as you attack, more of this splinter damage effect will end up stacking onto your target. Now there's also a fractured bone, or fractured that you get from bones, which is the handle and extra abilities. Your tool damage is increased. Squeaky, it's a sponge. This one sounds a bit weird. Why would I want to put a sponge on my tools? Well, it'll end up giving your tools no damage, but it will gain silk touch. So who needs the damage anyway? Stonebound, this is an Ardite trait. Mines faster and does less damage as durability goes down. Tasty. Pig iron, once again, but this time for the head. If hunger is low, you have a chance to eat the durability of the tool to regain hunger. It's not very much, but it will eat up a lot of durability. Superheat, again with the magma slime crystals. This, when used on a head, will allow you to deal extra damage to targets that are on fire. Unnatural, with night slime. More mining speed, the higher the mining level above the mined block. What this means is essentially, if I have something that can mine up to, let's say, obsidian or cobalt, or let's say cobalt, it will end up doing a lot faster mining speed when I'm mining something really low like stone or dirt. So if I end up mining something like cobalt, I'll have a slower mining speed. Writable. This is paper. It's a very unique one. This is the only way that I'm aware of to actually add extra modifiers, though it's at a very hefty cost. You can see the durability and attack. There's nothing really good about it. Often people will use it for the uh, binding. And of course, alien, end stone. This will give you a random bonus to durability, speed, or attack every few seconds. And there you have it, folks. That was it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please share it with your friends if you found out this was very useful and you think they might find it useful too. And until next time, see ya!